Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you so much for coming to class today and critiquing me. Very excited to speak to you this morning from the subject, The Love Triangle. Series we're going through, very uh, unique, interesting. Probably never heard a series called The Love Triangle before. Um, it's because we are the best church on the planet. <laughs> yeah, we're not even a church, we're a class, so boom. Um, love triangles, talking about, these are the three points of a love triangle. Me, you, and God. Or it could be you, others, and Jesus, or, or whatever you'd like, but God's on top, I'm here, and you're there, and together we make the love triangle. Today specifically, if I could give this morning a, a subtitle, the message would be a win-win situation. Specifically talking about what does it mean to be in this love triangle. We're going to be looking at Philippians chapter 1, starting verse 12. And I just want to read it for you. It says this, Now I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. Because of my chains, most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so in love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. Because of this I rejoice. Yes, I will continue to rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help given by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. And this is the verse we're going to end on. This is verse 21. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Let me pray. Father, thank you so much for this morning and just this amazing opportunity and blessing it is to come before my peers and professor and uh, talk about you and um, what it means to be in fellowship with you and each other. I pray, God, that you'd illuminate my words, that they would speak clearly like a double-edged sword, God, striking deep into the heart to change lives, Father, not just to bounce off of the heads of numbskulls, but God, truly to change our lives. Thank you in advance for what you're going to do this morning. We love you, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Um, have you ever been in a win-win, I'm sorry, a lose-lose situation? Ever been in a lose-lose situation before? Um, right now, I'm a, I'm a youth pastor, small youth ministry. Uh, it's been a great journey. We're called Lift, uh, and all my leaders are called Lifters. And our, <laughs> our, our phrase, or whatever, that I introduce every single morning is, Welcome to Lift, it's always a good time. You don't even have to try it. Uh-oh. <laughs> we have a really good time. Uh, and I, I, re I recall not too long ago, I'm, a, I'm new to this. I am very new to this. Um, just like a baby, fresh out of the, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm new to this. And so I'm, I'm excited, though. Every single morning, I'm excited. I'm welcoming new students. And there's a specific new student. And welcome this student, say, hey, how you doing? And, and everyone's coming in, I'm preaching, I'm into it. I'm just, all I want to do is preach. And we're going, and I'm like, oh! And then sweat's coming out, and I'm pitting, and, you know, I'm getting passionate, and everyone's crying. Not really. In my mind, they are. But uh, and everyone raises their hand to get saved, and I'm just like, yeah! Uh! It's good. And afterwards, what we always do is, after I finish talking, we always would go into small groups, and split up guys and girls and so I'm obviously co-leading the guys small group with a leader and we have a you know awesome time to talk about all sorts of stuff and there's the girls uh, group and they're led by some girl leaders 
And uh, I had gone out of the room, I think to go to the bathroom or something. I came back into the room and I noticed this new student. I was chilling, talking with all the guys and the guy leader, and I'm like, all right, cool. It's like, well, hey, have you ever, uh, have you met Megan? She's our girls group leader. Have you ever met her? She's, this is the girls group over here. So we're going to break up into small groups now. So, the student is sitting in your spot looking up at me, kind of questioningly like, yeah? What are you getting at here? <laughs> and I, I continue on, I'm like, yeah, well, there's, this is the girls' small group. <clears throat> this is the guys' small group. Like, so you can go in the girls' small group, right? Because you're a girl. <laughs> <laughs> you can go in the girls' small group. This is Katie, this is Megan, meet them. I notice everybody in the guys' small group is looking at me. It's just eyeballing me weird. What is going on? So I try one more time, just probe. It's like, here, I have a chair for you. Right here. Here. It's, it's clean. This is for you. This is the girl's morning. And one of my guy leaders just straight up looks at me and says, he's a guy. <laughs> <laughs> In that moment, it's like, uh, okay, I'm going to go light myself on fire. <laughs> There is nothing I could do. I was standing there looking at this kid that I probably just mortified. He's uh, from an Indian, Native American background, so he had really long hair. I had no idea he was a guy. <laughs> and it's, a, it's middle school, and, and sometimes we get younger kids in there, so I don't know. It looks like just a young kid, just, you know, whatever. And what do you say to a kid? that you just did that to. In my mind, I'm thinking, I just totally messed up his identity. <laughs> He's not going to know who he is anymore. You know, walk around. I just wanted to leave. I almost did. I just walked away and just said, all right, I'm done for the morning. I'm going to drive home. Uh, I decided I would stick to my ground and just, like, I'm so sorry, man. And, you know, it, yeah, I totally emphasized the maleness. Yeah, man. How you doing, bro? I'm so sorry, bro. Just, like, slugging his shoulder. Sorry. Bro, <laughs> the next week he came in and his, his hair was cut. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we get ourselves into lose-lose situations. Sometimes it's, it just happens to us. Like it, it was just the forces of nature. It was the, the cosmic powers that brought us into a lose-lose a situation. Sometimes we just straight up get ourselves in a lose-lose situation like I did. You know, I could go on, I have so many different lose-lose situations. That's not the only time I've messed up, you know, gender. I worked at McDonald's once, and sometimes I worked drive through and sometimes drive through and it's like, how you doing, man? Sir! <laughs> Sorry! Oh! <laughs> and there's nothing you can do. Um, I think that, uh, you know, lose-lose situations are actually all over the place. And um, we don't really have to look far. I'm not trying to like get all negative on you, but I do want you to consider there's a lot of stuff that goes on in our world. And I think about us in this room, I think about those who aren't in this room, who are facing, and I'm constantly thinking about this because I think about youth, face that over 50% now of marriages end in divorce. Ooh. That's a lose-lose situation. If there was ever a lose-lose situation, that's a lose-lose situation. It's like it's a lose for the parents, it's a lose for the kids, it's a lose for America, because now America's got this weird thing, we don't even know what we're doing with the relationships anymore, everybody's just having sex! <laughs> and it's Disney's fault, right? <laughs> I love Disney, but it's Disney's fault. Because every single movie, you know, it's like the, the prince and the princess, you know, they get together and it ends happily ever after. Disney's fault! I would like to see, you know, Beauty and the Beast 2. <laughs> the Return of the Beast. <laughs> or, you know, Tangled 2. The Thief King, right? Because he's a king. I don't know if you're some Tangled. All right. 
<laughs> I've seen it. I think, you know, it's Hollywood's fault, it's Disney's fault. I think really, you know, appropriate movies that we should watch is, there should be more movies like Titanic. Yeah, they like fall in love and everything's like awesome. It's like ah, oh, and then the Titanic, <laughs> and he dies. Yes, that's a better master of reality. You know, lose lose situations. <laughs> Welcome to church, everybody. <laughs> it's always a good time. Um, the point is simply this: we don't have to look very far to realize and to know there's lose lose situations. Out there. And here we have this letter of Philippians. And probably the most profound thing about this letter is the context behind it. So you don't necessarily even read this. You read a little bit. But let me give you some context about Philippians. Paul the Apostle, okay, called by God, he got smacked up off his donkey. <laughs> Jesus came to say, hey, you're going to preach for me. And so that's, that's Paul, okay. He's in prison right now. Because he's preaching. He's getting crazy passionate, reaching people for Jesus. He is thrown in prison. And prison has a couple things um, now, or back then, that it does not have nowadays. Nowadays, actually, prison is not that bad of a deal. You get really nice food, you get some TV. Uh, sure, the, the, the company isn't always that good. <laughs> but it's not that bad, right? But back then, Prisons were literally in sewage. I'm going to chain you up next to all of the stuff. And like, that plays a mental game. Consider being chained up next to all of the sewage of an entire city. You begin to think of yourself as like, I'm just like that. You see that, you smell that every day. Sometimes, I mean, God forget, forbid, taste it sometimes. Splash around, I don't know. <laughs> so he's literally chained up in sewage. And that's not it. That's not all that it is. He's, there's also a, a connotation back then where if, if someone went to prison, that is a huge, just bad place in, in society. Socially speaking, if you go to prison, you lose your friends. That's like, if I were to compare it to today, it's like you went and you, you just, well, I don't want to get too explicit, but let's just say you did something really bad and you just got disowned by your entire family. That's what happens when people go to prison. Their friends disown them, their families disown them. It's just this, this terrible situation and Paul even talks about it. We'll look at this in just a second. Paul even talks about it. People are speaking Christ out of rivalry. These are his friends. They did ministry together. And now because Paul is in prison, totally, just don't give a rip about him. Don't care about him. They even preach out of rivalry. And the last thing is this I want to point out to you. He's in prison. He's on trial for death. So there's potential. We, we kind of we gather, I'll look in this just a second, gather from this that he's not anticipating that he's going to die. However, there's good potential. He's going to die. C can you imagine the situation that Paul's in? If there is anybody in a lose lose situation, it's Paul. This is awful. And he was doing the right thing. He didn't mess up. But he's in prison. And he's in the absolute worst situation you can imagine. It's not going to get better. There's a chance he's going to die in this prison. And even if he gets out of this prison, they're, they're going to know that he was in prison, so he might not get his friends back. It's just a lose-lose situation. Yet, Philippians is the most positive and encouraging letter we have in this Bible. <gasps> How could this possibly be? Some of the themes in this book, or I'm sorry, in this letter, is, is encouragement and exhortation, it's unity, and it's joy. Oh my goodness, this is crazy, this is crazy. This is actually, Paul encourages the Philippians. There's only one other letter that even comes close 
to as much encouragement as we see in Philippians, and that's Ephesians. And it's not even as much. So he's just, he's just like, you Philippians, you're amazing, and I love you, and I'm just so pumped for you, and you're just amazing, and I see your future, and it's going to be great. And then he talks about unity, and it's just like, we're all in this together, and we're just, ah, and then he's just, I rejoice. And it's like, and we read it, we, I, I just read it this morning a couple times, he says, I rejoice, and I want to just be like, Paul, you're in prison. <laughs> you ever meet those you know, super bubbly people? Yeah, a lot. It's like they're in the worst, you know, like, what are you doing? You're in a terrible situation. Why are you so happy? It's like, why don't you just, like, go cry a little bit? That'll make me feel better. You just want to, like, you know, I know a couple people like that. It's, like, crazy to me. It's like their face is glued in a smile. And that's Paul here in Philippians. He is absolutely and entirely filled with joy in the worst situation possible. How could this possibly be? Well, let's look at it a little bit. Let's look, okay, first verse, verse 12. Now I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. Okay, that's interesting. Let's, let's jump down to verse 18 real quick. What does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. Because of this, I rejoice. Because of this, I rejoice. I think that there is so much in that simple... This isn't even the main point of the message. So I'm going to say it's going to get good here in just a second. It's going to get good. <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs> you're, you're, you're awesome. Um, Paul is talking and is like, even though I'm in prison and even though, you know, people are preaching out of rivalry and it's just terrible and it stinks and it literally stinks, Christ is being preached and because of this, I rejoice. We have a reason to rejoice. I want to point something out to you. Yeah. It makes sense that Paul's whole paradigm, his whole worldview, everything about him is Jesus. This is the top of the triangle. Everything about him is Jesus. It's just like, if it's about Jesus, I'm winning. If it's about preaching the gospel, it's a win. I rejoice. I want to point something out to you. We, we talk about how in, in the following verse, as a result, it has become clear that throughout the whole palace garden, everyone else, that I am in chains for Christ. Because of my chains, most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more fearlessly and, uh, and courageously and, and all that. It's great. Okay, the whole, he mentioned the whole palace guard. It's preached to the whole palace guard. What does he not say? People getting saved. People are getting saved. He just says it was preached. I want to ask you, what do you base the success of your ministry on? Is it that Jesus is preached? Or is it that you got to hire attendants? You know, I, this is so challenging to me. Because to me, in my perspective, it's like, if, if someone's not saved, I lost. But in Paul's perspective, if Jesus got preached, I win. Mm -hmm. And all of us, man, we can't save anybody. But you know what we can do? We can preach. And all of us here, we are called to preach. And because of that, whenever we do what God has called us to do, we win. Man, it doesn't matter if I'm up to, up to my waist in sewage. I can preach. I can preach. And because of this, Paul rejoices. Let's, let's continue reading. So in the following verse, uh, as a result, it's become clear throughout the whole, the whole palace guard that everyone, uh, to everyone, that I am in chains for Christ. I am in chains for Christ. This word chains, it's a very interesting word, okay? Uh, it, it has a couple meanings. It means chains. It means binds. And it means bonds. It means bonds. It can mean that when, he's, when he says, I am in chains, he's referring to the situation that he is in. I am in prison. 
uh, I am in sewage, or it can mean literal the actual chains that he that he is in that are wrapped around his uh, wrists or his feet. But it's interesting because this word actually, as the New Testament continues chronologically, this word morphs and it becomes something more than just the simple rusty chains that are around his wrists and ankles. These chains can be understood as bonds that bring us all together. So let, me, let me explain this to you. I'm going to pass these out. These are twine, and uh, I apologize that you know, I, I could have somebody help me. Actually, John, can you help me? These bonds, these, these twine, cool. Um, what's interesting to me about this is that, uh, okay, they can refer to, be referred to as bonds. Dang it, I got distracted, Victor, your mustache. <laughs> Bonds and mustache. I don't think so. <laughs> um, these can be referred to as bonds. No, no, okay. Now let me explain. Okay. What is Paul talking about when we are all in bonds together? What does that mean? So like, I'm not in chains, Paul. And that's probably what the Philippians are thinking is like, I'm not in chains. And so in, in, it's actually in uh, Philemon 13 when these chains are referred to as bonds. So what does it mean to be in bonds for Christ? What does that mean? It means we are bound to it. We could never be free from it. Because of that, because we are all bound to Christ and the love triangle, right? We are all bound to Jesus. We are also bound to each other. And that's the bottom part of the love triangle. So Paul says, I am in chains. And later this, this idea of being chained, being a prisoner for Christ, having bonds, is, is referred to as I am bound to Christ. And then later is referred to a common bond that all of us share. You know, it echoes something to me. It echoes Romans 8, 38. Neither life nor death, nor angels nor demons height nor depth or any power any creature will ever be able to separate us mm -hmm. and because of that guys no matter where we go no matter where we... oh man guys wow. mm. I'm just thinking about like the diaspora there's wow. so many different examples yeah. of where we were bound no matter where we go no matter what happens to us we are eternally and forever bound to Christ and to each other and because of this, verse 14 through 20, right, it comes full circle. Paul is confident that in the end it will get better. And uh, in verse 20 he says, he says, whether by life or by death, I am Christ's. I am bound to Christ. And so because of this, no matter what I face, I am not in a lose-lose situation. I am bound to a win-win situation. I am bound to a win-win situation, and if I am bound to a win-win situation, you are bound to me, and I am bound to you, and, and we're all in this together. I love you, you love me. Right? And that means all of us are in a win-win situation. All of us can go through whatever we face, whether it was your fault, or it was the powers of the cosmos, whatever. We are bound to a win-win situation. I want to want to conclude two things. I want to read this passage, a different translation. I want to read it from the message paraphrase. It is so powerful. And then I want to do something else that has been on my heart for a little while. Um, that's very different. I've never done this before. I don't know if anybody's ever done it before. But. We are bound to each other. This is verse 18 through 21. It says this. 
and I'm keeping, I'm going to keep that celebration going because I know how it's going to turn out. Through your faithful prayers and generous response to the Spirit of Jesus Christ, everything He wants to do in and through me will be done. I can hardly wait to continue on my course. I don't expect to be embarrassed in the least. On the contrary, everything happening to me in this jail only serves to make Christ more accurately known regardless of whether I live or die. I really get this. They didn't shut me up. They gave me a pulpit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes at our lowest point, guys, that's when our message is preached the loudest. Mm -hmm. They didn't shut me up. They gave me a pulpit. Alive, I'm Christ's messenger. Dead, I'm his bounty. Life versus even more life. I can't lose. I can't lose. All we do is win. All we do is win. I'm going to close here uh, now, but I want to do something really unique. I don't even know like if this is going to be good. Like I'll just say it right now. It'll probably won't be good for my grade. But I really want to do this because we're all going in different places right now, because we're all graduating. Um, well, most of us are seniors graduating, you know, and, and I'm especially thinking of uh, Dr. Ely right now, going in a different place. And uh, I was just thinking about bonds and about chains and uh, how we are bond bound together, um, no matter, you know, what the demographic of where we are is. And, um, so I want to pray for all of us that are graduating, all of us seniors, and then it would be really cool if like all of us students could just ride around Dr. Euler and pray for him. Mm -hmm. um, so let me pray uh, for all of you students, all of us. Father, I thank you that um, no matter what uh, we go through, no matter where we go, God, we are all bound to the same thing. We are bound to you. And because you are our Father, Father, that, that makes us all your children, and that makes us brothers and sisters. And so I just pray for all of my friends in this room that um, they don't know where they're going to go, or they're confused, or they're nervous, or maybe they do know where they're going to go, and they're super excited, and they're pumped. God, I just pray that um, you'll constantly remind them, you'll constantly encourage them, that God, even though we might not be here right now in this season, in this next time to come, God, we will always be soldiers for you. And we will always be bound to this one thing. And uh, God, eventually, even if we never saw each other again, God, we know that we'll see each other in paradise. Uh, in perfect fellowship with you. And so I just thank you for that. And I just pray, Holy Spirit, bless them with every single blessing, spiritual, physical, God, emotionally. God, I pray you give them vision and passion in their ministries that, are, that they're going to walk into. For those who are staying, God, I pray that they stick and turn this campus upside down, just flip it and light it on fire, that people are passionate and there's healings and crazy stuff is happening. And for those that are going out, God, I pray that they would just radically change the city that they're in, the people that they're ministering to. Thank you so much for them, Father, and thank you for this opportunity in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. And now, I, I don't know, if we can, um, yeah. Sure. Dr. Sure. Sure.